recent rate of inflation. But how do we know when irrational exuberance has unduly escalated asset values? The serious uncertainties about the economy and the housing market. Too many Americans remain unemployed. Ben Bernanke, when you took over the Federal Reserve, it had about 900, uh, uh, you had assets of about $900 billion. You ramped that up to about $4 trillion, <laughs> over $4 trillion. There are a lot of people, and a lot of people, as you know, are on the right, who look at that with horror, and they say, how will this end? So how will it end? How will you unwind that enormous asset portfolio? Well, fortunately, I don't have to do it. Uh, uh, you can that to me. Uh, so let me, let me just say, so that I think there was an enormous amount of understanding, and the media advanced a lot of very uninformed views on this subject. So, for example, if you went back a few years and you listened to media, congressmen, a variety of people, they would say that the, the Fed's asset purchases will cause hyperinflation, will cause the dollar to collapse, will cause energy spikes, will cause financial bubbles and bursts and collapses. None of that has happened. What has happened is that, the, is that those policies, maybe they weren't by themselves sufficient, but they were helpful. They helped our economy recover. We, our economy is, even if it's not, you know, certainly not perfect, but it certainly made a lot of progress and, and monetary policy has helped there. And many, of, if not all, of the things that people were afraid of, or some people were, I think informed people were not so afraid of it, uh, were, have obviously just not come to pass. I mean, that's simply a fact. Now, in terms of the unwinding, it actually is a very straightforward process at this point. The Fed has been very clear, and, and we discussed this when I was there as well, is that at some point, and the Fed statement makes this very clear, at some point, the Fed will simply stop reinvesting securities as they mature, will simply step back and say, you know, from now on, we're just going to let things roll off and mature. And over a period of a number of years, it will just go down. And, and in the end, all we have to show for it is the fact that over the last um, five years, from those securities, besides the fact that they helped our economy recover, the Fed has sent profits to the Treasury of a half a trillion dollars in profit, which has reduced the burden on the taxpayer by $500 billion approximately. So it's been, on the whole, I think, a pretty successful policy, and it's one where the, the roll-off has already been planned and laid out, and I don't think it's going to be terribly problematic. By the way, it should be noted that even today, the Fed's uh, size of its assets, its balance sheet, is roughly the same as other major central banks, like the European Central Bank and the Bank of England. The main difference, the, the main counterexample is the Bank of Japan, where relative to GDP, the assets held by the Bank of Japan are three times the size of the Fed's. So, it's obvious that many of the concerns people had have just simply not manifested. And not to say that those policies are panaceas. As I was saying before, central banks need help from other policymakers. But it, so far, I think many of the concerns have, not, have obviously not come to pass. And we're worth pointing out, I suppose, that Japan, with three times the size of the balance sheet, has not experienced hyperinflation or the, devaluate, or the debasement of its currency. They're like a bit more inflation, I think, than they have now. Since you have to run this operation, you, you're comfortable with what he said? Yeah, <laughs> Cer certainly am. I mean, we have laid out, uh, as been indicated, a strategy for how we will wind down our balance sheet. We've made clear that eventually we want a substantially smaller balance sheet. And at the present time, we hold a large quantity of mortgage-backed securities um, agency, Franny and Freddie, mortgage-backed securities, and eventually we would like to go back to an old treasury portfolio, but we will do it in the manner that Ben just explained. We have showed, the move in December showed that we have the tools and ability to successfully manage short-term interest rates. We move them up, not a lot, but 25 basis points, that occurred smoothly in spite of the fact we had this very large balance sheet. So we have tools to tighten monetary policy as we think is appropriate for the economy. And we would like to, you know, have get a little bit further underway in terms of moving short-term interest rates toward more normal levels before we let follow the strategy been outlined of allowing assets to run off our balance sheet. Um, 
if we do have another adverse shock, if there's a recession, we would most like to be able to use short-term interest rates to manage it and waiting to start that process of having um, assets roll off um, our balance sheet until short-term rates are a little bit higher. The economy's gotten to a point where that's appropriate. That creates a little more scope for us to cut interest rates if we need to. But it's all gone quite smoothly, and I, I completely agree with Ben. There were a lot of fears around this. I think people didn't, didn't really understand the economics of this properly, and nothing terrible, none of these terrible things have happened.